Welcome ladies and gentlemen to Commodity TV in a new edition of our online interview series. Today we want to talk to the for the first time, yeah, with Colin Healy, the CEO of Premier American Uranium. Good morning to Canada. How are you? Morning, Johan. How are you doing? Perfect. All fine. Thank you. Great to talk to you as uh, uranium is hot as I as I yeah as I said and predicted it a long time and it looks really good. Uh, supply demand is in a total imbalance. We will talk about that probably later. Also about the Russian ban uh, for the uranium for the US from Russia. That's also very interesting. But first of all, Premier American Uranium. You're quite a let's call it new company and you guys assembled a lot and are very fast. Can you give us a short overview on the company, please? Oh, sure, sure. Um, Premier American Uranium has only been trading since uh, December of 2023. And th this company was built uh, specifically with a focus on U.S. uranium. Uh, you know, it's purpose built to acquire, explore and develop assets, building a portfolio across the U.S. of attractive assets that are going to provide where, where we think we can acquire, add some value through exploration and development and get valuations um, in excess of what we pay. So very straightforward business model, a consolidation strategy where we're out acquiring and adding to our portfolio in, in ways that, that make sense and, and add value. And in this way, you know, pro providing pro what we feel is the, is the best vehicle in the U.S. space right now that is in, in, a, in the development stage for, for investors looking for uranium exposure and exposure to U.S. catalysts. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. So let's let's uh, keep it very easy because um, tomorrow, the twenty eighth May, there will be the general uh, meeting for the it's the merger or takeover, if you want to say it like that, with American Future Fuel. Let's assume this goes through. Why will you merge or buy American Future Fuel? Where, where do you see the benefit? So with American Future Fuel. Um we, we saw a fantastic opportunity. First of all, you know, we've, we've got a technical team. We're executing this consolidation strategy. It's one of the mandates of the company. And the technical team identified the Sevieta asset inside of American Future Fuel in New Mexico as one of the, the, pre, as the premier asset that, to, to get in New Mexico. New Mexico has over almost 350 million pounds of historic uh, uranium production. It's one of the largest... Uh, districts for uranium production historically in the world. And we're after this Sevieta deposit. It has a almost 19 million pound historic resource on it. Uh, we think that initial drilling that was performed by American Future Fuel really demonstrated the um, strength of that historic database. And we think that for um, fa fairly cost effectively and efficiently, we can convert that historic 19 million pound resource into a current resource. Um, and because of the lands positioning on private lands in New Mexico, we see it as having ex excellent or more attractive uh, permitting and, and licensing um, positioning than, than some of the other assets perhaps in New Mexico. Private lands are, are quite attractive in, in that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. So would you say then that fits also perfect, let's say, in the strategy with Wyoming and Colorado? Well, for sure. The, these three districts, I mean, adding adding New Mexico into the mix it really puts us in three super premium U.S. jurisdictions historically for uh, uranium production. Wyoming, you know, um, it has a fantastic history of production. We're only about, our cyclone project is only about... Uh, 10, 10 to 12 miles to the west of uh, your energy's Lost Creek plant, um, which was which was built and is operated. It's produced about three million pounds to the end of uh, to the end of 2023 historically at grades that are right inside the uh, exploration target uh, grade that we've set for our cyclone project, which we're going to be drilling this year. So, um, you know, between New Mexico, Wyoming, and Colorado. We're in three of the best historic uranium mining jurisdictions in the U.S. Mm -hmm. We've got historic production on uh, um, a couple of the uh, assets in Colorado in the Uruvan Mineral Belt, um, vanadium and uranium production. And uh, same for New Mexico. Once we complete this acquisition of American Future Fuel, we're acquiring a project that had uh, a few million pounds of uh, production from both uh, underground and uh, mm -hmm. surface uh, open pit mines. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, 
is in proximity to uh, a very prolific historic mine that produced uh, 100 million pounds. So um, three fantastic jurisdictions for establishing the footprint of, uh, of the company in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. And you also have uh, another U.S. focus because you bought Consolidated Uranium. And if I remember that well, there were approximately three to four projects which could go quite fast into production. So the, the way that uh, Premier Uranium was, was created, um, we... We were populated. We were spun out of Consolidated Uranium prior to their then that company being acquired by ISO Energy, um, and 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 uh, Consolidated Uranium contributed um, some of the Irvine Mineral Belt assets um, that are that with the historic product production in Colorado, and then um, our largest shareholder, Sachem Cove, which is co-founded by Mike Alkin and Tim Rotolo. Um, these guys were very early in the uranium thesis and they were out staking ground in Wyoming in 2018 when nobody was looking at or interested in looking at adding uranium ground and they had recognized that the, the fundamental um, supply deficit um, that was evolving in the space or that was going to evolve in the space specifically because uranium prices were so low that they foresaw the, uh, the attrition in production. Um, you know, the uranium prices were so, so low that um, that production was going to have to get cut. That's exactly what happened. And uh, Sage and Cove was out staking assets. So in specifically, uh, they had uh, acquired the uh, Cyclone Wyoming asset under a company called Premier Uranium. And that was also contributed to Premier uh, American Uranium during the spin out. So we we're spun out of consolidated uranium populated with an asset from Sagem Co populated with assets from consolidated that weren't um, high priority for the acquisition that it was going through. And that's kind of the inception of the initial portfolio and the positioning in Wyoming and in, uh, and in Colorado. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, 2024, the, uh, the year is, we are in May now. We already had uh, like the first five months are done. So where is the focus this year aside of American future fuel? Let's assume that goes through. Everything is fine. So where would you put now the emphasis, the focus onto it for the rest of the year? Well, three, three things. Um, two of them have to do with exploration. First and foremost, um, or let's just say first uh, on Cyclone because, um, you know, that we already own it. Um, Mm -hmm. Cyclone, had, where you have, uh, and we've established an exploration target there of eight to 12 and a half million pounds. That was done by taking historic drilling um, that was performed back in 2007, about 88 holes, with some really, really good um, regional results for an ISR type deposit, you know, eight feet mm -hmm. um, at 0.092%, uh, seven and a half feet at 0.08%, um, these kinds of things in the historic drill database. We flew. Uh, airborne radiometric survey on the property in 2022 and in 2023 we produced a, a 43-101 technical report that established an exploration target of eight to twelve and a half million pounds at a grade of 0.06 percent now you know to put that in perspective uh, i mentioned earlier the lost creek mine um of, of your energy which is 10 to 12 miles to the east of us and mm -hmm. they they're producing at it they produced almost three million pounds but an average grade of about 0.049 percent so You know, we're targeting a resource that um, would have the, the critical mass to be potentially a standalone ISR um, producing operation at a resource grade that uh, is, is at or in excess of existing, you know, successfully producing assets. So um, as far as uh, Cyclone goes, the plan, the plan in 2024 will be to go out there and start performing some of that exploration drilling, start to work on that exploration target, see if we can prove it up. There's kind of two land positions um, totaling over 25,000 acres, um, mm -hmm. making up the Cyclone project. On the on the kind of northeastern uh, section, we have, uh, or sorry, northwestern section, we have uh, mm -hmm. a Cyclone Rim, the Cyclone Rim target. That's probably going to be the main focus of, of drilling in 2024. We're just going through the permits right now. But we've got a budget of uh, just over two million dollars U.S. that we're going to put into a uh, cyclone rim uh, target mm -hmm. this year and start to hopefully deliver some uh, stock moving um, results to the market. Mm -hmm. uh, that that drilling is expected to start hopefully in early July and then uh, carry through till uh, you know 
the seasonal shutdown will probably be sometime in October. So that mm -hmm. the scope of that drill program is going to be part of an announcement that we do as soon as we have the permit um, so, so that we can talk accurately about what we're going to do. But that's the plan. And we're on track to drill at Cyclone in 2024. Yep. Um, OK, super. Ne next step would be the, the drill plan in New Mexico now. Um, following the acquisition, the completion of the acquisition of American Future Fuel, there is a plan to go, out, go in there and drill um, additional holes. The original drilling performed by American Future Fuel on that historic resource was extremely good, reconciled really, really well with the historic database. So I don't anticipate um, too much uh, difficulty in, in, in executing a, a second successful drill program there and bolstering that and proving up that historic database, leading to a Leading, leading to a conversion of some or all of, of that historic resource um, to, to current. So two drill programs in 2024. There's a lot going on, I would say. Super. Um, that puts, of course, the question up because we saw, I think it was one, one or two weeks ago, there was the uh, ban of Russian uranium for the future through the U.S. Uh, government. Joe Biden uh, signed that. And um, as far as I know, there was there's a program in place about $2.7 billion uh, of uranium how can I say uranium money, which would be deployed from the government? So first question is, what is your thought about the Russian ban uh, for the whole market, for yourself? And could you benefit also from that money? You know, you know, first of all, I think it's an extremely positive sign that the U.S. is, is now starting to get you know, real bipartisan support, moving legislation through quickly, converting it to law, recognizing that, that it's reliance on third, on third part, on external parties for, for it to support its nuclear um, reactor fleet is a risk and mm -hmm. internalizing and reestablishing a nuclear fuel supply chain within the domestic, within the United States um, is, is just the very, very important um, priority and advancement for them. As far as it, its uh, relevance to uranium producers, I think uranium producers, converters, enrichers, the entire fuel cycle is going to benefit from this. Um, and, you know, the 2.7 billion that, that, that HR, that the Russian low enriched uranium import ban unlocked is specifically allocated to Re-establishing the nuclear fuel supply, supply nuclear fuel cycle um, capability within the U.S. and I think that's going to include uranium production. We've got high uranium prices right now. Um, it's a, and this is a you know a, a main driver behind a, a, a bit of a resurgence in U.S. You've got you know mm -hmm. multiple ISR mines restarting or ramping up production in Wyoming. In you know not far from where we're operating, and I I think that. We're going to continue to see extremely strong support for nuclear within the U.S. Um, mm -hmm. on the back of this. You know, the U.S. Um, with its uh, Sapporo Five partners um, committed four point two billion. In addition, um, at the COP twenty eight conference last year, to build out a robust nuclear fuel supply chain that excludes Russia. Um, it excludes Russian influence. So this is extremely important as well. It all contributes to a narrative that that the United States wants to take back leadership and independence in the nuclear fuel and, and nuclear civil energy realm. So, yeah. and, and in addition to that, also at COP28, um, even, even broader, 22 countries, including the U.S., committing to triple nuclear capacity by, by uh, 2050. I mean, this is an incredibly robust environment. We've been talking, you know, as an analyst, I was talking about um, the supply shortfall and, um, you know, how, how robust that was. And, and that was before any of these things existed. You know, we just saw higher uranium prices, given that global production had curtailed and we were well below annual demand for the global reactor fleet. Um, that's something that this company is built to to provide leverage for investors for, but a second lever within premier American uranium that, like I said, I feel like it fits a space in the uranium investment um, sector right now that isn't, isn't well filled in the U S most of the companies that, that 
um, in the U.S. that had built portfolios of assets are moving into production. We, we don't have production risk. We're in the portfolio building stage, ex- executing consolidation strategy that our team has benefited from. It, it, you know, the DNA of Premier American Uranium involves the guys from Consolidated Uranium, Sachem Cove, um, and, and have executed an extremely strong um, consolidation strategy multiple times in the past with fantastic re- returns for shareholders. So mm-hmm. this is what we're, we're leveraging. You know, we're the, the whole idea behind Premier is to create a vehicle that has fantastic leverage to, to uranium sector catalysts, but also these U.S. catalysts because they're they're so robust. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, it looks to me a little bit like that the U.S. wants to replicate in the uranium what they have done before with oil. They want to be independent, right? That's what it looks to me. I mean, and, and it, 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 it makes complete sense. They have the, the, the people, the knowledge, the history, the reactor fleet to do it. it it's absolutely stunning that, that they're, they're now in the position that they're in, given the capability um, and, and, the, and, and the history. You know, um, d- during the Cold War, they're, they're consuming still about 50 million pounds of uranium a year. I think that they were they're mining eight almost ninety percent of that um, domestically, and you know they've they've gone from that to producing you know in the hundreds of thousands of pounds, where where mm-hmm. annual consumption is over forty seven million pounds. So I mean mm-hmm. it's it's really something that they had the resources, both people in the ground, the the technical knowledge, everything that it takes to reestablish leadership, and and you know even globally, you know. Um, you know why shouldn't U.S. technology be exported uh, globally to 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 be the leader in in civil nuclear deployment everywhere? Um, mm-hmm. and, you know I I think that they have that ability. So I really am a strong believer in the U.S. And you know we're starting to see them back that up with with laws like HR 1042, the Russian uranium ban, um, mm-hmm. and and the assured fuel supply. Um, just you know multiple things happening that really made made this a compelling platform for me to join um mm-hmm. you know beyond just the team that, that we've got all right um yeah so let's talk about your share structure uh, because i think you have some very interesting shareholders and also what is cash in the bank so we just we just successfully completed a a uh, subscription receipt financing that's contingent on the completion of this uh acquisition of american future fuel but that's going to move us um, out out of uh, out of that transaction with an extremely robust balance sheet. You know, over 15 million before transaction costs, um, leaving us plenty of money to execute um, the exploration programs that I talked about, both in uh, New Mexico and in, in Wyoming. So okay, the cash looks perfect. Uh, what is your shareholder registry? Because I think you have some very prominent names on it, right? Right. As I mentioned, we have you know one of the key. And most compelling reasons for me joining the company was this shareholder registry. Um, as I mentioned, uh, Sachem Cove, uh, extremely early to recognize uh, the uranium bull thesis. I mean, before other people were even looking at it, they were recognizing that the supply deficit was going to uh, cause production, or sorry, that, that low uranium price, prices, mm-hmm. prices were going to cause um, production curtailments and cause the supply deficit that we're now in. Um, Mike Alkin and, and Tim Rotolo. Tim Rotolo continues to be the chairman of Premier American Uranium. They're the co-founders of Sachin Cove. That co- that group is going to own 32% of our stock pro forma. Um, they participated uh, in, in, they added money in the in the sub- subscription receipt, receipt right. financing. And investors should know that they're investing, when they invest in Premier American Uranium, they're, best, they're investing alongside one, this group, this right. extremely strong, intelligent, group that that is getting the uranium thesis right um beyond that uh iso energy as a spin out of uh consolidated uranium uh we uh when when iso energy acquired consolidated uranium they inherited um a a strong shareholding in us so one and they've been supportive as well participating in the subscription receipt financing and then mega uranium who was also part of that group um and you know has fantastic experience uh, executing the consolidation strategy in the uranium space as well, mm-hmm. um, owning another 4% of our stock. 
And then once we complete the um, acquisition of American Future Fuels, so Pro Forma, Encore Energy, also being the vendor of the Sebieta asset to uh, to American Future Fuel, we'll have a decent position. So like 49% of our stock is going to be held by um, four, ent- four entities, Pro Forma, extremely st- strong shareholders with uh, fantastic depth and knowledge in the space. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I think it's something that... Uh, you you don't see too often in mm-hmm. in junior um, uranium mining companies and and it, mm-hmm. it's uh, extremely attractive to me. And I would say especially in a junior company. For sure. <laughs> okay, last question: What is your personal feeling for the uranium spot price by let's say until the year end? Okay, um, you know, in, in, you're an analyst. You're an analyst. You must yeah, have opinion. <laughs> in, in, in the public domain, I, I took a pragmatic approach to this. In the public domain, you're going to find research that I did um, not too not too long before joining uh, Premier American Uranium, where I put in I put a price of a, a of 110 dollars on the spot on the spot um, for 2024. And my thinking there is that you know, in an extremely tight market, you can have you can have really large swings in uranium price it, you know a little bit of demand in the market as you know, we've seen it you know how do we get from 18 dollars to, to over a hundred dollars it can move quickly um in the face of demand and my thinking because of that volatility you know there's lots of uranium price forecasts out there much higher my thinking was it's extremely hard to predict the volatility of the price but we need at least a minimum price that is going to incentivize the new production that's going to fill the gaps um for the shortfalls and ramp up, ramping up mining is difficult in any commodity, including uranium. It almost always takes longer and is more difficult than people think. Um, and so what I'm, what I was doing with $110 uranium price forecast was saying, this is where we need to be just to incentivize the swing production to fill the supply gaps as best we can and incentivize new substantial production to, to meet the supply gaps going forward. So I have 110 there's a $110 price out there attached to my name for 2024. I think that we can get there. Super. I think you are too conservative, but we will see. <laughs> well, and, and, and as I said, I 100% recognize that the yeah. price could be much higher. When, when, you can, when you can have potentially $30, $40 swings in a commodity price. Yeah. It goes like this. Yeah. From yeah. an analyst seat, I had to mm. consider something that was justifiable on a fundamental basis. So mm. reaching that incentive price threshold for both the, for the highest marginal cost production mm-hmm. was, was, was where I was comfortable. Okay. But Super. I, I, do think Perfect. We, I do think we could see higher prices easily. Yeah, definitely. I'm, we are both on the same page, I would say. Super. Hey, Colin, thank you very much uh, for your time. That was great. Uh, good insight. And I think we talk then soon when the drills are turning and the American Future acquisition is through and you have the first drill results also. Then let's do an update. That was perfect. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Joe. And I really appreciate it. And it was, uh, it was fun. Thank you. Super, me too. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was Colin Healy, the CEO of Premier American Uranium. Yeah, you heard it. It is a fantastic play for the U.S. uranium market. And uh, hopefully tomorrow, meaning the 28th May, the um, annual, the general meeting, special meeting for the acquisition of American Future Fuel goes through. I think it goes through. And uh, they have a lot of cash in the bank. They are perfectly set up for 2024 also 2025 the drills will start to turn and we also expect a lot of yeah hopefully good news from the company i'm a shareholder in the company you really should have a look onto premier american uranium because fantastic team fantastic shareholders fantastic backing and they are in the right spot they are in the u.s and with the uh, u.s russian Ban of uranium of Russian uranium. I think this is yeah one of the real milestones we wanted to see. This will unlock a lot of money from the government to go into this space, and I think the uh, U.S. will be the next large uranium producer by 2030 and following years. And uh, yeah, really, board the boat, take the train. The train has left. Uranium train has left the station. Make sure you are in. I am in. Thanks for watching us, and bye bye from Switzerland. <laughs>